Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Pera Perez. I'm the founder and uh, CEO of uh, Metacampus. Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming here. And uh, today we have one of the sessions that I'm most interested in, which is the evolution of uh, social media and how blockchain and decentralized finance blends into the um, uh, social communities and the way that we interact with each other, which is one of the mainstream use cases of the adoption of uh, blockchain. And uh, to discuss about that, uh, we have uh, two experts in, in something as pioneering as this. And we have um, Gigi De Brist, thank you very much for coming. And uh, Ido, thank you very much for coming. Um, they're both working on pioneering projects in this field, but they've been in Web3 for several years uh, now and seeing how uh, helping brands to adopt uh, some of these um, uh, new technologies. So um, without further delay, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Of course. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Gigi. I'm usually based in uh, Dubai, but actually um, originally from the Netherlands, so it's very nice to, uh, to be here close to my family and um, uh, talk about actually my work field. Um, so I've been in venture capital and venture building over the last four years, worked with over, I think, 70 startups. And at the moment, uh, since uh, four weeks, I'm consulting um, um, Kaichi, which is um, a social file platform. And I was actually involved with their uh, inception three years ago. I'm super glad to support them into the next phase of acceleration, fundraise, and go to market, because the sentiment seems to be finally ready. Excellent. Uh, welcome. And um, as you said, uh, while we may feel that it's new terms that we've never heard before, um, this company was already founded about three years ago. Uh, what about you, uh, Adam? Yes. Uh, so my name is Ede Kofut. Nice to meet you all. Um, I was actually born and raised in the, in the picture that uh, Philip showed. So I worked for right. many of the companies uh, in here. But today I'm here to, to represent the social world. I'm the founder. It's a social media application in the social fine space. OK. Um, fantastic. So let me ask the audience, first of all, um, who has um, heard or who already knows about social fi or social finance? Can you raise your hands? Okay, so that's about 10% of the uh, audience, which is about uh, right. Um, and then, um, so could you tell us a, a little bit about um, what's, um, how we could define uh, social finance and within the context of what does it mean a decentralized uh, social media network? Yes, of course. Um, I think what's most interesting to start with is that at the moment we really see, um, a, let's say, a bottom-up movement. A lot of creators online are really asking for a better platform where they can directly be taken seriously as business owners, where they can monetize their content effortlessly. They can even maybe have their community directly get skin in the game of what they're doing. Because at the moment only big tech is winning and I think we're really uh, seeing that it has an expiration date. The take rates are tremendously high, even though some platforms like YouTube give 50% or whatnot it still doesn't cut the chase. So um, for me, this movement of Socialfy is really about enabling creators to become actual business owners, and they need new platforms. Absolutely. And I think one of the, um, the things that um, we've suffered in the last decade is about that uh, whenever there is no product, the users are the product. Uh, and our um, data has been probably um, exploited in a way that uh, people were not fully aware of. Uh, and that is to benefit, of course, the platforms, uh, and then to get that, uh, you know, more targeted advertising. Um, how does this change, Edo? What is this economic model, and what is how are we trying to to shift from that, um, let's say, the user being the product to the user being the beneficiary of the using the platform? Um, it, it simply changes because the, and, and that's because of blockchain technology that now offers a state-of-the-art solution for users to own their content. And like you own your crypto, you own your entire social graph. So your profile name, your followers, all of that are like they are in your crypto wallet. Um, Owning your own profile, it may seem uh, silly, but um, only when you see some of the cases where Elon Musk blocks an uh, user's account or you know, um, at Facebook uh, used to happen as well. And then you lose all your data, all your contacts, uh, and you feel helpless. You will feel totally lost. Um, and the companies, they don't have to tell you, you know, they do have the right, you know, within the terms and conditions to terminate your social life and your social history forever in one go. 
Correct. That, that's exactly what's happening on, on Web 2. It can't on Web 3. It can't in ours. I'm pretty sure it can't in Keiichi. Uh, you own everything uh, you do. So you, know you are no longer the product. Uh, you own your own presence and you can monetize it. Okay. So, so what, um, Gigi, what are the key main things that uh, users can, can do in these uh, social networks? When we talk about decentralized social networks from a user perspective, and even from, we'll talk about how brands can integrate here as well, but um, is this as simple as using uh, Twitter or Meta or any of these, uh, Instagram and etc., or there are some unique differences in the way that uh, people have to interact with each other and use these platforms? Love the question. Um, I think at a first glance, if we would discuss Socialify here, we could make it potentially very generic, right? You monetize your content, you own your data and whatnot. But if you take a closer look, there are big differences. Some platforms are really aimed at um, artists or NFT creators. Um, other platforms like Kaichi are really focused on um, monetization, not necessarily on owning your content, where DSO is really focusing on also enabling developers to even build on top of DSO and is focused more on taking all your users with you. So basically the platform becoming the uh, customer instead of you becoming the customer. Rakaiti isn't doing that, so uh, bear with me. <laughs> there are a lot of nuances in this landscape and I think over time we will filter out um, what is really something the user cares about uh, because sometimes we presume the user cares about data privacy, but they don't always care about these things. So we need to have to sort of filter out what is good to centralize, what is not effective to, to sort of, um, or let's say there's a skill of what should we keep centralized versus what should we make decentralized in order for uh, the platform to uh, be as much user friendly as we can. Um, uh, absolutely, and I think that's giving users the option. I think that's one of the main things that um, that you know to to stand for freedom. You know, which is we we forgot about that sometimes we are meant to have options in deciding about our own data, about uh, what do we want to do. Um, how do you enable that in your platform? Uh, you know, because this. When we talk about creators and creators monetizing, sometimes it's not just about okay becoming like um, someone with a lot of followers and then based on the views, it's actually giving them more tools to create interactive content in, in a way that then they can build their own community on top and, and features which they can monetize in, in any particular way? Well, uh, yes. Um, so first of all, uh, people can give tips. So if you create something engaging, uh, people can give tips. That is money that directly comes into your wallet. That's one element. The other thing which we're running now for, for two years is what we call post to earn. So 90% of the advertiser revenues we get are distributed to engaging creators. So an engagement, that's the interesting thing about blockchain, you can actually measure how much likes does someone get, how, does, uh, uh, how much uh, tips does someone get. So there's a whole range of things. You can measure and then rank. And then the most engaging users earn money and it doesn't matter if you are big or small it's about how engaging you are in web 2 99% of people don't make money on their socials here everyone has the potential to, to make money and there's also a win for us because the only thing required for those users to be able to uh, to be eligible for the for the rewards is to use our application to post so the advertiser get brand awareness the, the creators earn and we get the users. That's uh, actually quite interesting because uh, if you look at how Twitter, they're claiming about how much money they're giving to creators, um, the risk is, has become such a meme within the Twitter community because people keep posting that, uh, you know, they've had thousands and thousands of, um, of viewers and comments and stuff like that and they get 0.06 dollars or you know, something that is, it makes you laugh uh, at such these grand claims when um, people moving towards uh, the decentralized um, uh, social networks with a, a lot fewer interactions, they're able to have a much healthier, let's say, crypto balance uh, compared to the use on uh, on Twitter. And as, as you said, this also is not so much based on the algorithms from the platform, it is about tipping, it is about your own community rewarding, for, uh, rewarding the creators for your actions. And that direct monetization uh, channel 
uh, I think is one of the things that they are really you can get a lot of uh, direct feedback between what's working, what people like, uh, and what they becoming a bit more spammy and, and, and so on. That's why I like the term social fi because it reflects that it's about social combining it with money and earnings. Uh, excellent. And we've seen that both of you are working on, uh, in different products. Uh, we're talking about here. Uh, what the creator economy uh, being valued about uh, 500 billion, uh, something along these uh, these lines. Um, where do you see what is the the role of uh, at the moment? Innovation is key to start, you know, developing this um, uh, this sector to make it uh, grow before we even can consider about uh, competition uh, being a, an issue or being uh, more or less uh, healthy. How do you see this, Gigi? Um, well, I think first of all, within the socialify, let's say landscape, um, a few of the other competitors are actually the founders are my my friends, and even we're here together, you know, being excited about this whole movement because we're basically all in for um, a new paradigm whereby we can all win. And I think if you support this momentum together, it's the only way how we can um, really onboard a lot of users. Um, and shift away from um, the current, yeah, biggest leading platforms. That's an interesting uh, point in regards to onboarding all these new users, because by onboarding them on social fine, we're also onboarding them onto Web3, into self-custody, into, yes, you are in charge of your own data, you're in charge of your own crypto, you're in charge of your own keys. What happens, um, is there, any differences on, uh, for example, uh, losing your uh, kid phrase, or uh, how do we prevent any of the scams that uh, we see sometimes within the crypto space, within those more like social environments? Is there, how do you tackle that in your platform, Edo? So, so these are some of the uh, the onboarding barriers. Uh, I, I was yeah. recently onboarding a few people, and they need to get accustomed to the word seed phrase. And it's something replacing a password, and it's like kind of new. And do I now own crypto? And what does that mean? And there's five billion social media users, but there's only a few hundred crypto users. So the combination of that, uh, that's an easier market than all five billion users. So basically, you simply need to engage with people and explain and explain and explain again. And that's why it's good, eh? because on the one yeah. hand, we're sort of competition, but on the other hand, we're making people's minds ready that this is the new way to go, and we do that part together. Maybe um, one, one note on that. I think um, what's interesting also for, for you to know is that a lot of platforms have um, a direct Twitter API connection. So for example, um, you could log in with your Twitter or Gmail, and then you can post on a platform, and it, is, it also connects to Twitter. So they're basically also utilizing sort of that movement. Um, I believe they want to do that only initially to just foster growth and then cut it off, because obviously that's not the goal, but I think it's an interesting um, yeah, aspect to be aware of. So you can literally just, with one click, you can also go, well, let's say, Web 2.5. <laughs> Absolutely, and, uh, but th it is important that we, uh, while it may be stronger barriers now at the beginning, people, they have to understand how self-custody works and what responsibility it brings into the user because uh, that is what uh, gives you the, the freedom to own your own money, assets, and, and whatever else. So it's one of the, of the main, of the fundamental constitutional uh, freedoms that we have to preserve. And that requires the user, yes, um, being more aware of how to handle that responsibility about uh, looking after your own, um, uh, your own assets. Uh, I hope that answered the, one of the um, uh, questions that we got from, um, from the audience. Another question is about, um, how do you guys think that the, uh, uh, the platforms and the innovation and all the noise that uh, you are generating in this transition towards uh, social finance, uh, how do you think that the big players will react to this? Um, do you think that that's going to make Meta to be uh, more revenue sharing with uh, the users to stop gathering all that uh, information and selling it into the advertisers? Or do you think that there's going to be different routes and, uh, and because there is rumors as well that uh, Elon Musk may, may launch a coin uh, for Twitter, for X, and, and so on. Do you think that it's going to be two parallel worlds, or do you think that you're going to be end up competing the new players and the traditional players into one shared space? Uh, well, I have two sort of two levers of my answer here. Yeah. I think one lever would be um, I truly believe there is a future world where enterprises and web technology 
both synergize, and we already see that movement. Um, but I think I would like to park this for a second, get into it later, because what's very interesting, what we see in the States, A16Z is one of the biggest venture capital firms, venture builders, and they have been actively working with the government to make sure that regulations are in place. And now we've seen that they, um, uh, Farcaster has funded 150, uh, is funded with 150 million, um, and, and amongst them A16Z. So you see that Farcaster, which is one of the leading social fi, if you would name it that, let's say decentralized social platforms in the States, um, are being funded by very big VCs that also have ties into the government, so they're really trying to make a change, obviously also for their own portfolio because they have invested in a lot of web free companies. But I do think, uh, if you ask me, like, what is the future? I think we would see um, the enterprises such as um, Meta making new models. Um, but for them to be, let's say, a disrupt innovator, they're not going to do it unless they're really forced to yes. um, by this bottom up movement. So if um, everyone transitions there, they will have to adapt their business model as, um, yes. as we've seen in the past. You know, what do uh, you feel about the same? Uh, they, they mimic the mon monetization elements, so they try to find new ways to distribute money to the users, to keep the users on the platform, so that's kind of similar. I'm not sure if, they can, if this Socialify ecosystem takes off, if they can really follow. What they can always do is build, rebuild their own application on top of any uh, uh, Socialify uh, ecosystem, so that's also an option, but I don't see them really competing or developing something new because they're so much intertwined with their ad-driven business model that it's so hard to step away from that foundation DNA that's in their company. It just stifles their own innovation, uh, so I think they, they won't be able to, to develop like an alternative in the ecosystem, but they will find ways to mix um, absolutely, and and the same as well as the evolution of the big players, um, the audience are also asking about what is the evolution for the user is uh, at the moment, uh, will social fi um, models, will incentive that you know, enable creators to monetize their content, will that shift the uh, quality of the content they create? In my view, uh, I think at the end of the day, there is no one creating content on any social media from LinkedIn to Twitter to Meta, anywhere, without a purpose. And that purpose may be the personal brand, the purpose may be growing your uh, community. The fact that you're not able to directly monetize that piece of content uh, doesn't mean that the purpose of creating and publishing that piece of content has the same intentions as they would have on social. Fine, would you concur with that? Or do you see some risk about people's, um, people using those content platforms as just a way of trying to get some uh, very short, almost like micro-economies, uh, you know, with the one, 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 one post shots? Well, I think um, in the beginning, let's say there's currently a movement where you get a lot of, let's say, points for engagement, for posting. So I'm not saying that that is really... Um, fueling the level of quality, because <laughs> people want these points for an airdrop of the token of the platform. However, you need that engagement and post and activity for the platform to gain users and to gain attention. So I think in the beginning, we might lower content potentially, but I think longer term, we need to overcome this cold star problem, and then I think quality will catch up. Okay. What about, uh, how are you seeing it in your platform? So f from the creator side, you see a variety of types with respect to monetization. So you have the, the people that come in for, for the quick money, they win to build an audience soon, or they try to uh, maybe even scam people because now there's money involved. So money always attracts uh, uh, some wrong people uh, uh, as well. And you see people being there for the sake of sharing the art. And if they earn, that's nice. Um, so. The fact that the creator economy opens opportunities for them, I think we, sti we are still going to see how it's going to play out and what kind of monetization users, personas, communities there will, there will be. Uh, that, that's not, maybe not something we should dictate, but we should facilitate and then see how it grows, what the needs are, and support them in their monetization. I think that's totally the right approach, is give people the tools and see how far you know, they can take them. You know, it's, uh, it's funny that uh, Twitter with so many millions and uh, they have like two or three ways of interacting, you know, the like, the repost and uh, mm. the comment. 
and then you see other platforms that uh, like um, uh, Workcast that has been there, you know, for what a year or uh, and and because they've opened up the um, the tools to the creators, creators have already developed over 70 ways of interacting with the post, and they're all you know, and you can choose whichever way you want whenever you post uh, anything, uh, others to interact with it and uh, and so on. But someone made another very interesting question, actually, which is, we talk about the creative economy, we talk about these platforms enabling creators. What about, let's say, the other 70% of people who are not really creators as such? And they're just community members that we're there, yes, to engage, to socialize, and uh, so much, but we are not about creating content. Uh, what is, how does these new uh, networks benefit all the other the, you know, users, which that will bring the big numbers as well, is the audience as such. Um, as far as Gaichi, let me just give one clear example. Um, you can literally, if you believe in your favorite influencer, or I don't like the term influencer, actually no. I like the term creator, uh, you can get skin in their game by simply buying their token and they have their ownership of deciding if they want to launch a token. If they're a big platform, they will most likely do that. So all their followers will win if the token price goes up. Um, and next to that, if they would own uh, the native token of the platform, um, that token literally works as an index, so you have exposure to s every single creator on the platform, and there will always be a few big winners, so you will also get, um, yeah, let's say, gains from owning the platform's token. And the third aspect for the user uh, is that we have rep sharing. So literally with every sale made on, uh, by your creator or by um, uh, a transaction where a native token is used, you also get a part of the rep share. So, so yeah. that's really important. So me as a community member, I can also gain out of the creator, creators that I follow and that I, you know, I interact with. Uh, um, and you see, how do you see then, um, Edo, how do you see the space for brands in, uh, in, in your platform in the, in the future? What's, uh, because, okay, we're seeing how it benefits um, all the users and the, I would call the direct creators. When we're talking about brands, partners, uh, pr service providers, they're all part of the uh, ecosystem. Is it just through ad revenue? Is it through giving them tools to grow also their it, it, uh, it's, communities? It's to also about giving, especially about giving them tools to grow their community. Um, so one of the elements, and whether it's brands or influencers or whatsoever, they have followers which are like all the same in Web2. Uh, but via the social world, people can buy the social token of these brands. So it's like owning a piece of share or equity of, of those people. So they can engage with, with their followers in a totally different way. They could organize uh, and ask me anything uh, uh, for the top 100 holders. Or if it's a brand like Adidas, uh, they could sell their NFTs, uh, engaging with, uh, with their uh, consumers in a different way. So in essence, it's a black canvas for, for everyone. Yes. Uh, and that's how brands and partners, and uh, all the enterprises, they need to start shifting that mentality about embracing these platforms and, and getting creatives with them. Even if you're looking to recruit people or even if you're looking to test a new product, a new service, uh, all of that is really important. Uh, getting the reg user feedback, maybe something that, you know, getting those polls before, it was almost like an impossible task. Now, if you're able to reward uh, users, people may not uh, be bothered or may not be negative about all these things and may, may, may want to, to engage. We have another six or seven questions from the audience, but we do not have the time. Uh, it'd be great then at the break that uh, you can follow up uh, with our guest. But one final uh, thought uh, from each one of you. Uh, what would be the most important takeaways for um, individuals or for uh, brands trying to make this transition? What sort of things they should really consider before um, you know, uh, entering into this space and, and how, how to onboard them? I think for me, the biggest takeaway for brands is consider your consumer or user um, as a key stakeholder and also treat them that way. So uh, I always like to coin the term brand tribe and think about ways how can we make them part of the brand tribe so they sort of become evangelists and tokenization supports that and Socialify is native to tokenization. Absolutely, and actually very uh, funny that you mentioned the word tribe. Um, we used to work for Cupra, part of the Volkswagen group, a, a new brand, very young, uh, very creative, and it's the Cupra tribe. That's how they call the community, that's how they call it. And, uh, 
And uh, you're absolutely right. It's that sense of uh, they're not customers. We cannot talk to them as customers. We want them to be part of our brand and engage with us in anything that we're building. You know, what would be your final thoughts and recommendations? Uh, to add to this, because I totally agree, is the, um, uh, they should have like an, a very curious, exploring, innovative mindset. So if you come into the ecosystem as a user or as a company or as a brand, like, okay, I'm going to do this big thing and then I earn a lot of money and then I'm going to go. Don't do it. Be there to, to help innovate and think about rewards in five to ten years and not in the, in the short run. Uh. Excellent, excellent. So please um, check out their profiles, uh, register your accounts on their uh, platforms and start exploring and start learning and then engage, you know, use the opportunity that they're here to, uh, to direct any uh, feedback questions. Thank you so much uh, for your Very time, for your knowledge, yeah. and, uh, and I hope that was uh, useful for uh, everyone today. So how many people know about social finance now? <laughs> for those hands. Good, good. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks.